Hi, it's James here from Sprinkle Donut Forge in Moscow, Texas. And today we're going to be working with some leaf spring. <coughs> Automotive type leaf spring, but this is from a, uh, a low boy trailer that you pull behind a truck. And uh, these springs were gifted to me by the mechanic who removed them. So, in that light, the metal probably has a lot of stresses in it. Um, bringing it up to forging heat will take care of that, hopefully, if there's not any cracks inside. The project we're going to get into today is making a carpenter's tool. Any of you that done any remodeling or carpentry uh, or been to a hardware store probably seen these little flat nail bars. They're super handy. Um, I use these more than I do a standard crowbar. Now, I made a crowbar out of coil spring and you can see me make that bar in one of my other videos, and I'll show it to you. Now, this is as forged. I have done no grinding or anything to it, and I ripped apart an entire bathroom down to the ground with this thing to build a new shower. I ripped apart 2x12s. I ripped apart a lot of heavy stuff, and I wailed on this very, very hard with a three-pound hammer. It's very durable material. Uh, and luckily, um, I didn't burn it, or and there wasn't any stresses underlying in the metal that uh, forging didn't relieve. So it made an excellent tool. It showed absolutely zero wear after pulling thousands of nails and prying up heavy lumber. So we're going to work with this. I have separated this spring, and I punched out one of the bushings. Now, if you're looking at this the way I'm looking at this, you see that little roll? I'm seeing this shape. And I'm seeing expanding that hole out, and it won't be that hard to get this shape. And if you'll notice, there's a little hole. It's a teardropped hole. It's fullered in about halfway through the material on one side. So we already have a hole where the spring was attached to the other springs. So that will be the location we will replicate this hole in, and then judge a good place to cut it off. Now being that it's a bit heftier material, I'm going to make this a bit longer. I'm just going to make it in the attitude of the snail bar. So I'm going to get this in the forge. First thing we'll do is work on expanding the hole and creating this paw. And uh, I've noticed that it has a bevel on it. Just like when you're forging a hinge, it has this bevel on it. And when that bevel folds out, it'll be on top. And this bevel is on the bottom. So a little creative hammering should fix that but without any further ado I believe showing you is easier than explaining the whole thing which I already did so let's get this in the fire get it hot and we'll see what happens see you in a minute all right I'm fixing to pull it out of the fire I got this big spike made from a 7 8 hex wrench and of course I've softened this and annealed it where it doesn't bust in my eye. So we're going to go over the hardy hole with it and see what we can do. Here we go. Not a super high heat. Not what I wanted. Started expanding it, the heat left rather quickly. Heat it up and do that again. See you in a minute. Now we use the handle punch to bring it a little more open. on the horn. Oh, 
open it up nicely. Get that curl on the top of the horn. Opening up, heat up this tip portion, work it over the horn, then take it over the side of the anvil. See you in a minute. More heat. We need to put a notch in it from this side. See you in a minute. Okay, I can see a problem here. We need to straighten this out to make it easier to work on and to get everything done before we give it that crook in it because standing it up like this and trying to do any kind of punch work is just going to screw me up so let's do that see you in a minute Now I can work with it.
That whole fast ain't great. See what I've done there? I've made an impression. Now I've got to slit that impression. See you in a minute. Alright. Set up this sorry hole fast. Huh? Now we're going to slit that impression. You just let that impression just a little bit more over the edge of the anvil, but I'll show you what we got going on here. It's starting to split. Don't worry about anything hanging out of the end. You're going to grind that off later anyway. We just need to kind of park this. So, and one-sided edge. Beveled. That way it'll hook a nail. So let's get it back in there and we'll do that real quick. See you in a minute. There we go. Like I said, don't worry about the lips on the end. We're gonna grind that off. Or you hot grasp it. Now this thing being curved is kinda playing hell with me. But uh, right now I need to length the hole onto it. So I'm gonna call that in good. And uh, I'm gonna have to put the uh, impressions on this side, this time, around this hole. I'll kind of illustrate what I'm trying to do here. Make the metal thinner to where it's easier to make a cleft in it. What they did, they got kind of this Lawson shaped indentation uh, about halfway through the bar, roughly. And tapering up and getting a little bit stronger here. So that's what I'm gonna attempt to do. Now with the tools that I have, that's not the easiest thing in the world. But uh, we're doing it basic blacksmithing style. Now, I've got a couple of choices here. I can go ahead and put the crook on this end and do all that work and have this end completely done. And then cut this off and straighten the thing to work them. Or I can leave this flat, let it cool, turn it around cut it off 
and do all the work on this end without a crook here. But uh, I'm going to go the first route. Go ahead and create that curve again. And uh, instead of beating it over the edge of the anvil, which is going to put a little crevice in it, because my anvil edges have some pretty square spots, believe it or not, I'm going to put it in the vise and bend it over and tap it. And uh, I'll go ahead and set up the vise. That way you can see me do that. And uh, anytime you can use your vise to perform a bend, or at least get some of your bend in there, it saves you a lot of beating and it saves a lot of marring uh, of the material. So utilize the tools that you have. If you do not have a vise, you can do this over the edge of an anvil. Uh, I would suggest finding a spot that's a little rounded already from use so the crevice isn't sharp because you don't want to create a spot that's going to be a stress point uh, that could fracture or break off later so let's heat this up and I'm going to bend it right around in this location 90 degrees and then what I have to do is I have to turn it over and set that 90 back and instead of using a round hammer I'm going to use one that I have as an old uh, block hammer a mason's hammer that will direct all that force into a crevice and kind of set that back to create more of the attitude of the paw I'm looking for. So let's heat it up, we'll go to the vise, do the bend, and we'll see you in a minute. Alright, here we go. I think I'll bend it right about there. Now look at there. Saved all that beating. I'm going to overbend it. Then I'm going to try to get some of that crook in there I was talking about. Curve that over nice. And you see, I did all that without any beating. And that seems like a pretty good angle of descent. Got a little heat left there. Let's put a little more curve in it. Just tap it lightly. Kind of bend these over just a little bit. Straight. Now, I know it's kind of ugly right now, but believe you me. If all you did was this, you could pull a nail with it, just like it is. So now, we've got to straighten out this spring to make it easier to work on. So I'm going to begin in the vise. I'm going to heat it up and I'm going to take some of that spring out of it when it's hot. And I'm going to do that over the whole area. But I'm not going to do it too much on this side because I want a little whip up. So why take bends out that you have to put back? So we're going to heat up the section of the bar from the first bend. And let me show you. I'm talking away from the camera here. Uh, from here to the hole, almost to the hole needs to be relatively flat. So that's what we're going to do is heat up that section of steel next. And uh, I'll work it a little bit in the vise, and uh, we'll get it a little straighter leading up to the hole. <laughs> See you in a minute. Here we go. Just lock it in there loosely, and you can take and bend it like you want to. Of course, that's a little overbent. All right. That looks pretty flat. 
All right. Well, that section's flattened. And I think to make this whole thing easier, I'm going to go ahead and flatten the section between here and the next stage past the hole. And uh, that'll make uh, my job a little bit easier. Of course, here's the rub. What y'all aren't seeing is I got to let this cool down because I'm not going to quench it. I got to let this cool down enough to where I can grab it by this end and be mindful of the sharp edges that I've created. Uh, while holding on to it, so I'm not going to get my hand in contact or any part of my body in contact with the sharp edges. And I also don't want to be in contact with the heat that has been created. So I am going to heat up this next section. Hopefully I can hold on to this end. If not, I may have to grip it with some tongs. Um, I don't want to, to quench this steel during the forging process because it tends to want to get very grainy when you do that, and you have to uh, thermocycle it and normalize the thermocycle it to get that grain happy again. And really, I didn't do anything to that other bar. I didn't heat treat it. I didn't do anything to it. I let it slow cool, and uh, it was stronger than the nails I was pulling. It was stronger than the lumber that I was tearing apart, so that was good enough. Um, there are ways to heat treat this. I'm not going to show you that. Uh, because I haven't needed to use that process for making carpenter's bars. So let's heat this up and straighten it out. And I think we should cut it right around, uh, I'd say that's about four to four and a half inches from the hole. And I'm going to use the hot cut on the uh, hardy hole of the anvil to give it a bevel already. So all I'll have to do in essence is split it and shape the bar after I've done the work on the hole. That's going to be the rough part. So let's heat this up and get on with it. See you in a minute. Okay, so here's part of what happens off camera. and uh, Or else my videos would take two or three hours sometimes to make. Um, I've got my green coal on top. And I have placed the coke, which is coal that has had the impurities burnt off of it for the most part. I put this coke around the metal because it's not going to stick to it like tar. Uh, the green coal will. You take hot metal and throw that green bituminous coal on it, it's going to get very sticky and messy and you're going to have that stuff just glopped all over your steel. So I saved the coke from previous forgings, some of it, I leave a lot of it in the forge, and I group that around the metal. Now if you'll notice there's some holes here and around where the air that I gently introduce is, is escaping and it's messing up my draw. I'm trying to focus the heat on a certain portion of the metal. So I'm going to throw some of that coke and some of the fines, uh, fine ash that's not clinker. I picked through this and kind of fill in those air gaps with this. <clears throat> and uh, you can direct the heat right on the spot you want it uh, when there's no danger of touching the metal with the green coal when you have the gaps filled in sufficiently you can take a little green coal and kind of put it sprinkled on top sprinkled uh, to start coking up and your fire will be eating that later as you turn things in and move stuff around fire control is a big part of this and you notice I'm not giving it any air. Let me explain something to you. You want to get something hot. You think, oh, I'm going to reef on this blower and I'm going to give it hell and I'm going to make that thing hot fast. You're making the outside of your steel hot fast. But the inside is not necessarily as hot as the outside of the steel. So let's say you're drawing a taper or something of that nature to where you're trying to extend the piece of steel. Well, the outside's going to move because it's hot and the inside will stay behind. We're not doing that in this process, uh, but we're giving it a good soak so it's through and through the same heat. When you look at that glow, that glow goes through the steel all the way through the piece. And depending on how thick um, or how bulky the piece of steel is that you're using depends on how much you let it soak. Um, because I don't want to just heat up the outside of the metal and then leave the core colder. 
So that's what I'm doing here. I'm letting it soak. And uh, you can't see your steel, but I keep myself a few little places to look in there to see the glow. I don't see any black there. I see that it's glowing, so it's actually ready. I can pull it out and do some work to it now. But I thought that I would show you a little bit of how I use fire control to target the heat on my steel and uh, why it takes so much time off camera to achieve this. Now that little end could be very hot. I left the plastic bushing in this end. So I know it's not melting that. And it's just barely, barely warm. So I can hold on to this barrel while I use that other side in the vise and kind of help shape it. And then, of course, after that function, I'll have to let that other end cool where I can grab a hold of it. And uh, don't just grab it to see if it's hot. You know, take a, a damp cloth and see how fast the water evaporates and give it time. Set it in a place like on the brick. Uh, somewhere where it's not going to get quenched off or uh, cool too fast. Um, this spring steel is pretty forgiving, but just black doesn't mean cold. Just remember that. Uh, if it's in a blacksmith shop, you walk into a blacksmith shop, uh, into the smithy, and you see a piece of steel, don't just grab it. It could have just been in the forge five minutes ago, and it'll be black as all get out. It'll look like everything else, and you'll severely burn yourself on it. So, All right, it's soaked enough. We'll get over to the vise and uh, do a little more to it, and we'll get to the cutting off point. That way I can uh, finish making this bar. I just thought I would show you a little bit about fire control and such and such. See you in a minute. Target area heated. Let's, um, uh, I mean, you don't have to put a lot of pressure at all. You can get this kind of straightened out fairly easily. Now that bowed up. Don't, although you'll be tempted, don't reach up the bar still because the heat gets proportionally greater. Well, what do y'all think? I think that's flat enough to work on. We're going to be cutting it off. Oh, just past the glow here. Probably about four, four and a half inches, like I said. So what I've got to do is I've got to leave this thing to cool. So I'm going to leave it to cool. And uh, I'm going to take a shower or something. Just give it plenty of time. And uh, then we'll heat the other end up. And go ahead and put some uh, coal on your fire green coal on the outside don't give it no air just let it start coking up and uh, it'll be ready to stir up and put the metal in when this cools so I'm gonna spare you all that watching me shoot the shit with my wife and all that and um, we'll get back with it when that's cool enough for me to grab see you in a minute or a few minutes all right, the bar is cold enough for me to easily handle. This end is cold, this end is still a little bit warm. I just earthed it, I put it on the ground, and it didn't take that long, maybe 20 minutes. And uh, of course, before I grabbed a hold of it, I made sure that it wasn't too hot to handle. Remember, black doesn't mean cold. Anyway, you see about where the fire has burned off the finish. That's right about where I want to cut it. Now, um, let's take the pattern bar here you see it's flat and the bevel goes this way so if you're looking at the paw down this bevel needs to be on top here so we need to put the paw up to put this side down on the hot cut to create the bevel there let's get this hot we'll do that see you in a minute Okay, it's fixing to come out. Now, you're going to have to hold the end with that sharp claw facing up. Do not put your hand over the claw, because if you hit it and it bucks, it's going to slice your hand up. So I grab it, leaving the claw away from any meat. So here we go.
start the cut right about there. Feel your notch. Slightly crooked. Not bad though. That's not hot enough to be cutting. You have to remember what you're working with. Spring steel. Anyway, we started a good cut across it. You can see the cut has bevels. Straighten this up. Because you'll get a little sideways expansion when you're cutting. Just get it hot and do it again. Just keep your hand out of the way of those sharp claws. See you in a minute. Alright, let's fetch it out. Just before it breaks off, take a pair of tongs and work that little piece of metal off. Make sure to take your hot piece and discard it in a place you're not going to step on it. I don't know if you can see the bevel. See if we can't make it exactly what we want. Now we've got to uh, create our indentation and make a notch there as well. And uh, I'm not going to do that right now because having that notch in there might make this more prone to burn because I have to heat close to it to get the indentation for the hole. So let me put this down in a safe location and we'll proceed with indenting the hole with that lozenge shape because we have to make a V cut uh, towards the tip of the bar that way when you slide over the nail head you can pull back towards you and lift up and extract the nail so that's what we've got to do we've got to indent this area and it's going to slightly deform the hole that's not of any consequence so let's get on with it see you in a minute all right let's draw it out chain it down and do the indentation Fire. Means you got so much time to work with it, and that's it. Chain it down. It's gonna jump so bad. To avoid the heat, use some tongs. Get over there. I'm right at you got to hit it really hard. Okay, that's starting to bend a little bit. Let's straighten it out. Remember about them sharps. Oh, 
Well, that's looking pretty good. I know it's a little wonky, but this is a handmade tool. See? We got our indentation. Now, also, at the tip of the bar, where the other nail cleft is, on this side, the indentation has to be down there as well. So let's heat the tip and do that. See you in a minute. All right, here we go again. Chain on it. And let's center this up. See if we can get some of the cleft on it while we got it warm here. Maybe. Nope. And we'll suck the heat out. If it ain't glowing red, it's talking to you. It's saying, don't hit me with anything. Anyway, maybe with the glow slightly gone, you can see it a little better. A nice indentation. And we'll put our cleft centered on that. And uh, I'm not using a cutting plate on my hand a lot. I don't do that. This anvil seems to respond well to the tools that I use on it. Uh, some tools can cut and damage your anvil. So if you value your anvil, uh, you might want to use a sacrificial cutting plate to do this stuff on. But I like the mass under me when I do it. And my tools uh, have not been able to damage this anvil, even made out of this material. So look, that's nice. So we're going to cut that. Put that little cleft in it. But uh, I think before we do that and leave this end prone to burn, I think we should do our V here because that's probably going to be the hardest part of this whole project is getting our V away from the hole. Like I said, the V, the crevice of the V goes towards the tip. That way you slide over the nail, you pull back, and you can get some leverage on it. So let's do that. Let's heat this portion up. See you in a minute. Alright. Let's make that little apple seed shaped eye. If you can. Or if I can more like. This is going to take some heats. Oh, I'm all over the place. <laughs> oh, I'm starting to see it now. Get it established. I think I'm going to punch that down just a little bit. Okay, you hear that sound? clanked at me. So when it clanks at you, the spring still is saying, hey, I need more heat. Don't just grab the middle of that chain. It's probably pretty hot. Anyway, we're starting to get uh, that piece chopped on a little bit. Let's heat it up real good and see if we can actually aim this time and try to make that cut a little bit more defined. It's going to take a few heats to do this, so bear with me. It's a long video. But I'm showing you the whole thing. So we'll see you in a minute.
It'll heat off of that one. Woo! Be a good time to wear a glove. My gloves are dirty. And don't get uh, all absorbed with burning your hand and put any part of your meat on top of that chisel because I promise you it's going to hurt. You need to flatten that up a little bit. Don't grab the chain where it's been touching the metal. Now that chain hold fast deal, a lot of people don't like that. Now watch that sharp edge. A lot of people don't like that. They want a traditional woodworker's hold fast used on anvil. Uh, I learned it from uh, Nemo over at Nemo's Forge. We were talking one day and he mentioned a piece of chain and I was like, well, you know, that's a splendid idea. All right, it's starting to get warm on this end. I'll show you what I got. I'm starting to chop that out a little bit. Notice he's closing the hole. Like I said, that's of no consequence. Um, I'm gonna have to let this piece cool so I can handle this end a little better. So the best heat sink I got here is either the earth or the anvil. The anvil is warm, so I'm going to let it sit here first, and then I'm going to earth it a little while. Let it sit on the earth. I ain't got snow or nothing, so it's not too cold. It's not going to quench it. So, let me show you again. We're starting to develop what we want here. Okay, that burns. See you in a few minutes. Alright, about to draw it out of the fire and uh, put the little cleft in the end for pulling nails. I took a piece of uh, leaf spring I had and fashioned this apple seed shaped what I call a nail eye punch. It looks like a hex eye drift but uh, it's made for punching that little hole because the chisel really is just causing a lot of trouble and sometimes it's easier to make a tool than it is to try to make do with a tool that's not appropriate for the job. So I'm gonna pull it out of there, chain it down, put the cleft in it so let's see if we can get you a good visual here here we go There we go. That ought to do just fine. Didn't damage the anvil at all either. The tool I was using is a lot softer than the anvil. All right, so now we need to focus our attentions on heating the area where that little hole needs to be punched and try out the new tool. I put a basic temper on it, so we'll see what happens. See you in a minute. Let's give it a shot. Already a little coal dust in the hole, but it ain't like I gotta worry about it sticking. Ooh. 
definitely pushing it in the right direction. Bulging. Shaping that hole up though. Look at there. Get this hot enough to where I can punch that out. Maybe get a proper slug out of the deal. See you in a minute. Let's get that indentation a little deeper. That way it'll fit the head of the nail a little bit better. So that's what I'm going to do. Should have done this when I was doing it in the first place. That's all I'm using this old uh, step pin punch of some kind. The dollar tool bin at local pawn shops and tool sales and yard sales is a good place to find objects that you can use for whatever purpose they look like they'll work for. Anyway, that's cool enough I think you can see. Right there at the cleft where the nail head's going to be, I went ahead and thinned that out by punching that impression a little bit deeper. Let's get it hot and punch that hole out. Or try anyway. See you in a minute. Alright, I'm gonna try to punch it out on the wood block. tell one thing right off the bat. Short as that punch is, I'm probably going to have to wear a glove with it. That slug come out. Got a little rag on it. Got all that rag on it instead of all that filing and stuff. I'm going to see if I can't use the punch against the anvil to kind of thin that out. Uh, even if I can't get rid of all the rag, of course i got to get it hotter. But even if I can't get rid of all the rag on there, being thinner it would be easier for me to file it out. So that's what we'll do. So far I'm fairly happy with it. So I'm going to give it a couple of licks and uh, make it where I can file it. Then we'll proceed. I'll grind the bar and uh, I'll spare you all that. But I'll grind the bar and we'll get it in shape. Okay, back in. See you in a minute.
do that work just fine. There we go. Inspect the tool we did it with. Still in good shape. So you can take that small piece of uh, leaf spring that comes off the bottom and you can make little tools like this. The hole in the middle doesn't seem to be affected, affecting the way the tool works. It's a quick and dirty punch thingy. Alright, we'll develop the attitude of the bar, I'll grind it, then show you the finished product. See you in a minute. Alrighty. Adjustments at the anvil. it off a bit and we'll catch you in a minute well here it is there's the paw little teeth back of the nail hole front there's our nail puller here's the bar I've been using store bought Here's a heavier duty version, which is more like what I need. Need a tool, make a tool. Sometimes you have to make a tool to make a tool. So, anyhow, anyway, that's all I got for today. Hope you enjoyed this and gleaned something from it. Till next time, bye.